Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vows Ask Nick edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household of Allie and Genevieve. How's it going, ladies? What's new? I feel like we're at like a puppet show or a lemonade stand Why? in the way that we're sitting what? like this. I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? I just feel like we're like a puppet show or a lemonade stand. Yeah. Those are like two very different things. No. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Just because letting we're everybody know like how I'm this? feeling. You're literally sitting yeah. exactly how you're sitting every episode. Correct. I just wanted it's it after to... Labor Day and we're both wearing white. Ah! Yes! But it's white pants and white shoes. And we're wearing white on top. Okay, I'm wearing a white skirt and white short. I'm wearing a white shoes. dress. Okay. I think it's fine. Nick's wearing white. Oh my god. We're all so kind coordinated. Of we have a great I'm super excited about this episode. Uh y'all. You'll know this episode's like a little it just kind of like really worked out. It's a little different because you're going to notice that every one of our calls, it was very much a texty office hours episode. Every, every single call led with an, something happening. Action uh, was taken. Action was taken. And I really hope you guys enjoy this episode. And I hope, my, my hope is that this episode will inspire other people who might be listening, who need maybe a little help to shoot a shot or to break up with someone. We're here to help you break up with whoever you need to break up with. I just really want you guys to know that. We, we are here. We'll call. You know, we'll certainly have you draft a text. But listen to this episode, and, and I hope it inspires you. My hope is that, uh, m- that we'll have more calls like this that are, have a little bit more um, urgency around things like... Active situation. Active <gasps> situations. Oh my God, we should be using that for the episodes. Yes. 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 So for those of you yeah. who don't know, on our episodes of Better Day to Never, we call people who uh, call in because it's a, like a live show. If they're on their way to the date or you're just coming home from a date and need some immediate advice, we call those active situations. We have like a jingle for it. Do we? Mm-hmm. I have yet to hear it. Because you, oh yes, you missed can we it. play it right now? <laughs> Derek's coming in. Derek heard yeah, us. I need an active situation. What is? <laughs> it's really oh, it's good. It's really good. You're gonna love it. Oh my god, I, I, we're about to hear it now. <laughs> Derek, how long have you been working on this? I mean, it took two weeks. <laughs> two weeks? <laughs> not not straight, but it took some time. <laughs> so it took some self reflection. Well, done. I just realized I spent a lot of money on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not two weeks straight, but it, it took some time thinking resources. Derek's last paycheck was just labeled <laughs> active situation. Just, like, okay. just this. We have an active situation. Yes, I love it. It's really good. And that was Derek. Good that job, was, Derek. Yeah. That was Derek <laughs> that was, talking. Yeah, no, I know. So we have a lot of active situations where the people call. I don't think they anticipated uh that they were in an active situation no some of them were even a little hesitant yeah but we convinced them. we convinced them that they needed to break up with someone immediately yeah and some people got some a unexpected un- unexpected message we even got responses in the middle of the episode mm-hmm. wild stuff so anyways i hope you uh, all enjoy this kind of action-packed episode three back-to-back-to-back active situations I should make an email label yeah, for so, active situations. Yes. Oh. So if you yeah, are yeah. listening to this episode and you feel inspired and that inspiration can come in the form of like, maybe you, you don't, you want to shoot your shot, obviously with someone we're here to help. But mo- more importantly, if you want to like break up with someone, we're here to help. And if you need an active breakup situation and maybe you don't know if you're in an active situation, but you think you might be in an active situation, let us know. If you need us to reach out to really anyone, or need help to craft a text. We're here to help in your active situation. I'm really excited about this episode. I hope you enjoy it as much as as I do. Wouldn't um, it be fun if the show one day evolves to us going to a coffee shop, breaking up with them? Nick breaks up with them. Oh, we like put Persons- Nick in a van. <laughs> We're we the person, around the like, city. hey, dude, can we meet for coffee? And then and I it's sit you down and you're instead. Sitting it's there. you. Yeah. Hey, yeah. listen, um, it's not Becky. It's you. What did you expect, Brian? <laughs> you weren't making your priority. <laughs> Look at these texts yes. that I have. What were you thinking when you sent her this? <laughs> this would be genius. And then we film it. Uh, so very excited. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. And if uh, if it inspires any of you. We hope we get more of these calls going forward. Just really just happened organically. And we, and, uh, 
it just really was a fun day recording. Allie was have we really got any updates mood. from our active situation? I was in a silly, yep. goofy mood. We do. We even have some updates. Amazing. Yep. That's a good reminder to tell you that we have a bunch of update specials available to you behind Vile Files Plus. I think there's like 12 or 13 update specials on Vile Files Plus. So if you've been enjoying our update classics that have been jumping once a month on Vile Files Classic, well, you are sorely missing out. You are way behind the eight ball with all the potential updates that are available to you. So just go to vilefiles.com. Just sign up for Vile Files Plus. It's a seven-day free trial. Hey, I got a question for you. You know how people always talk about, like, I got invited to a wedding or a family event. And I'm always like, being invited to a family event, I think, is a little overrated when it comes to trying to find the meaning if they like you, you know, type of thing. It's like, oh, they invited me to a wedding or they invited me to, like, a family function. And I'm here to say, yeah, that's not necessarily a big deal. Really? However. Okay. If there is a family photo of any kind. <gasps> Oh. Get them out of there. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But if you're included, that's a sign. Well, Is no, that what you, you take one say? with them and then you I, take many without. In the past couple months, I went to an event. Okay. And there was a group photo. And so when someone brought a, 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 a recent significant other and they're in the photo, to which I thought, they better fucking get married. I don't think they're going to. But what do you know? You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? I can't tell you how many fucking baptismal photos my family has with fucking exes in it. Where because it was like our siblings always wanted to feel like, well, but so and so should be in the photo because like, absolutely we're, not. Uh, and I'm like, fuck. All right, here we go. They and, take the photo. They're there to take the photo. Right. They're the spare person in that also, situation. Also, if they're gonna be in a photo, you put them on the end. That's what my uncle did at Prop his wedding out. with my dad. And he was like, Lois, this guy in your life, put him on the end. The person wasn't even hesitant. They inserted themselves in the photo. And then I said to one of the people whose photos it was, so to speak, mm -hmm. like the main characters of the photo. Uh-huh. I don't like they both can fucking get married. And they're like, fuck yeah, they better. People that agree was kind with of this. funny. That's yeah. hilarious. So what would you say in that situation if you had a, a, a sibling, for example, or a friend? who was really excited about their new boo. Mm -hmm. So much so that they were like, we're going to be on it forever, you know? And then they, let's all take a group photo. Yay. And then, and then s said newbie was in the group photo and you knew deep down, if this doesn't fucking work out, this photo is fucking useless. Well, what we do is we have just family photos and then like in the process of photos, we'll say, okay, boyfriends for this one. Or we'll be like, okay, bye, boyfriends. So they all come in and they all go out. You have multiple versions. Yeah. Well, in this particular instance, everyone else was more of an established pairing. And you didn't get a photo without this person. There's no duplicate. No, because it wasn't like, all right, let's exclude let's, the, the one, one <laughs> fucking person who like, we're pretty sure isn't going to be here next year. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard when it's just the one. I yeah. think it's on the, it's, it's, I agree with Genevieve. It's on that person to kind of take the role of, I'll take the picture. Or I'll step out. Is it out. a red flag? When a that little person, bit. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And I've watched so many people in my family, of... like handle yeah. it very well of when they are the new boyfriend or like, for example, when they're the girlfriend after maybe like a spouse has passed away. I've watched people really like step up to the plate of, no, you guys just do this. Or like, yeah. I'll take the photo or no worries That's about me. That's the right me. thing to do. Yeah. For sure. Because. If you feel comfortable in your like place in the family and like your relationship, then w why would you, you don't feel need to the prove need? it? Exactly. Yeah, but I feel like if you're more, you know, on the rocks, and you it's actually like, I need to be prove this family yourself photo. more by taking a back exactly. seat. Exactly. Exactly. Just confidence. confidence. I would love to key. hear in the comments if uh, you guys have had experienced a, a an awkward photo situation where someone didn't really belong but inserted themselves. But it's hard to, like, tell them they don't belong. I think it's also, it would be one thing. You always want to be in the position where everyone's going, no, please, come. Like, be in the photo. As opposed to you inserting yourself and everyone silently thinking, oh, that's going to be awkward. I mean, even, like, up until somewhat recently, even, like, with Natalie's family, I, I, may, I let them include me. Mm -hmm. You know? It's like, oh, you know, Nick, get in here kind of thing. I don't just assume that I want to... They want me in a photo. Yeah. I saw this TikTok that was like, I'm super tall and I only ever date short girls because if we break up, then I can keep the photos because they can just crop. 
person. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just her next to a random suit jacket nice. or just his head by itself. Yeah. Genius. Really genius. It's true. Well, I, I had a question on the topic of like exes. Like, what do you guys think about recycling activities or like trips with exes? Like, do you think that you should only do new experiences with an ex or like do you think you're allowed to travel to the same place that you did with an ex? Because we have a writer in her who has a very strong opinion oh, let's about hear it. it. Let's hear it. I always like how we say writer in her and not just writer. But they wrote in. Yeah. yeah. What would you s- We have a writer. But we, that's not. We have a caller. We have a listener. We have a writer. But like, I feel like the a writer, writer and I say this is a published author. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, the word writer implies a, like, a yeah, skill set. Yeah. Mm. And sending an email is not one of those skills. Yeah. Because okay. writer implies like they wrote us a novel, whereas this is like an autobiography. Like a, a writer. Like, yeah. <laughs> wrote Dear a writer. writer. Dear writer. Grammarly um, go. Anyways, what does our writer inner have to say? Current dilemma I'm facing with my ego. How petty is it to not want to travel anywhere your current partner has been with an ex? My husband and I are currently trying to plan our big husband. yearly vacation. Yeah. Okay. Not, not even boyfriend. Yeah. Mm. They have committed to each other. He's way more cultured and traveling than I am. He's been to a lot of European destinations. A few suggestions for our trip, whether it's been from him or family, are places he's already visited with an ex. My immediate instinct is fuck no, I'm not reliving a romantic getaway you've already had. Of course, I didn't outwardly say this to him. I just responded in a non committal, hmm, maybe. I know there are endless options to go around the world, so picking another spot really shouldn't be an issue. And I know it's 100% my ego that's speaking here. Okay, good. I guess I'm just wondering if I'm way overthinking it, or is this valid? Uh, the fact that, uh, that they're married, I think, is significant. Because if like this person wrote in and said, hey, I just met this great person, and we're a couple months in, and we're planning our first big trip together, and like we just like happened to talk about past trips, and I realized this is the same place that he went with like his like past girlfriend they dated for five years, I can understand why that like might feel a little icky. You know, you 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 don't feel necessarily on solid ground with this relationship. There's more questions and answers, and so like that makes sense. This is your husband, and the fact that you are giving so much power to these past relationships should be beneath. Like these are Whoa. fucking girls he dated. You're his wife, <laughs> so like you're letting these girls he dated basically call dibs on these what I'm assuming are wonderful cities that you haven't been to. And if you don't want to fucking go, don't go. If you have no interest in these places, but really you're not going to go to fucking Hawaii because he went with Jill a couple years ago. Like you're his wife, you know? And I just feel like, why don't you go ahead and make new memories and stop giving these relationships that don't exist anymore so much power over you? Because that's what, that's what it is. You know, it's your ego getting in the way. And, and as a result, you're kind of reliving his past relationships in your mind. That's essentially what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, it's fair to not like want to reuse the itinerary that they use, like stay in the same hotels. Yeah. Like, I think that would be a little weird, but like you don't need to let Jill ruin Paris yeah, for you. You don't have to recreate the yeah. weekend that they yeah. had. But yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, well, I and guess you next, don't get to, you're married to this guy. we went on. Don't was, get to go to Paris for the rest of my fucking life. Yeah, like, yeah. They're trying to like take the photos in yeah. the exact same spot. So if I see it correctly from <laughs> yeah. this angle, we were actually over there and it was a beautiful sunset. But, but there is like, there's this thing we all do in relationships where you want to like erase everything, like their history before you, you don't know? Don't erase and, like, it by like making their memory of Paris or whatever city it yeah, is like, replace about the you memory. Yeah. and not them. Again, you're their wife. And I really hope that means a lot. And I really hope that as his wife and he's promised to spend the rest of his life with you, that you wouldn't be so bogged down by the memory of a relationship he didn't want to be in anymore. And didn't want to marry her. And didn't want to commit to her. And you're suggesting by not wanting to go there that the reasons he wants to go there has something to do with her. That's, that's what your ego is implying. That's what your ego is afraid of. 
when you say it's your ego, your ego is thinking, well, if he wants to go there, it has to, it, it must be because of her, you know? And that's where that pettiness comes in. You yeah. Know? Oh, is this is like that Olivia Rodrigo song, Deja Vu. Like, I wonder, yeah. I wonder, I want to hear Josh's dates. response to that song. Yeah. Like, yeah, I do. Or like, oh no, I literally never even thought to have deja vu about that. I don't know if I've ever like fully repeated a date. I've definitely done that with oh. like friends. If I'm like, great, this restaurant's by this bar and then we'll do this. I have routines. Yeah. Sure. But not. Yeah, like, yeah. And if you guys had a favorite restaurant, maybe don't go there. I'm assuming in this story, he like went to the Dominican Republic once with an ex-girlfriend and then went to like Paris or whatever, you know, these kind of touristy type of cities. And they just went there. And like, that's Im immediately off limits now, you know? But yes, if they had some sort of like ceremony. Yeah, ceremony? I, just, well, I mean, like, for example, Nat Natalie and I met in New York. New York has played a significant role in our relationship. We've made it a thing going to New York. We go back to New York. It's fucking New York. And now, granted, we're engaged and we're having a kid together. And, you know, hopefully we work out forever. But like, God forbid we, we don't. But we're never going to New York. <laughs> it's New York. Ever again? Well, you can't that's do the that. thing. The difference would be like you guys going to New York versus you guys taking someone else through your exact stops. And like, this is the hotel we're going to stay at. And then we're going right? to go to this There's restaurant. So and options. then we're going to walk here. Yeah. But you're right. There are many other destination places that you could go to. You just have to ask yourself, how much are you making it about that? And how much power are you giving these girls that your husband used to date? How much do you want to let your ego make you feel insecure about that? And you going and not making it a thing and having a great time with your husband and making new memories and not worrying about constantly the whole trip. Did you go here with her? And blah, 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 blah. Like, that's the way you should do it. When you think about people, when you give them time and energy, that's you giving them their power and they may be completely unaware of it but like you're you're thinking about them why are you thinking about your partner's exes your he's your husband that's my two cents but anyways if you want to break up with him because he went on so many trips we are here to help with active situations remember that and to send in your active situations or just general questions texting office hours mediations all of the above make sure to email us at ask nick at the we got a great week lined up for you. We have a couple of couples from the Ultimatum season two. We got Roxanne and Antonio. We got Kat and Alex. Should be dramatic. Can't wait to bring that episode to y'all. And then get ready for a going deeper. You get to you get to go deeper with Tyler Cameron. What more can you it's ask everyone's for? Everyone's dream. Everyone's dream is to get deep with Ka Tyler. Well, we will be getting deep with him, and you can join in on the fun. That's this Thursday. So wild, wild week lined up for you all. Can't wait to bring it to you. Be sure to check out Vile Files Plus. Let's get to our active situations. I hope you enjoy as much as we enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye. What's your time with Nick? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Good. Uh, my name's Emily. I'm 30 years old. And I've been seeing this guy who actually just got me pregnant. And I don't know how to tell him because he's moving back home to a different country. Okay. Well, first of all, congratulations. I think. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Are we happy? How do you feel about the pregnancy, I guess? Um, I'm excited. I'm just like scared. Yeah. Like it's hard to be excited for something that like really affects someone else. Yeah. And this guy you've been seeing, is this like, what's, what's your relationship status? Is it just some guy you've been hooking up with? We're kind of serious, but like I've, so he's here for work and I've known that from the start. Like we met back in April and it's just been like known between the two of us, like, okay, I'm here for work. I will be going back to my home country at the end of my contract. So it was but otherwise understood. it's like a fairy tale. Like it's been perfect. Got it. So before you found out you're pregnant, like let's assume you weren't pregnant. What would, where would you two be? Like exclusive? Just not like, I don't know. We did, we're not like boyfriend and girlfriend because he's going to leave anyway. When is he planning on leaving? The end of the year. Okay. So before you found out you're pregnant, 
It was like, we're just going to fuck around and kind of not fuck other people. But at the end of the year, you're going to, he's going to move back to his home country. And then you're going to what? Not just move on or. Yeah. Unless he decides to come back next year, which isn't certain. Next. What? Like, and why is he here? Like next w- season. Season for what? Like farming. Okay. How did you meet this guy? At a bar. At a bar. And he's just. In- yeah. He's just here farming? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I live in the Midwest, so I'm quite far from where he's from. Okay. Oh, my, I adore him. I think he's the best. And before you finally got pregnant, again, like, had there been any conversations about exploring an actual serious relationship? Like, why are you guys exclusive if eventually he's moving back to a different country and you have no idea if he's ever coming back? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. We both like actually really like each other. I That's great. It didn't start out. Like, I don't think we thought it was going to go anywhere. And then now it's gone. Well, way, way farther than I ever even imagined. Like, I can't even believe this is happening. Like I've, well, I've had a couple the, weeks of process. The pregnancy or just like, like him? Getting pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> well, both, but like the pregnancy. Um, I mean, the, the pregnancy is obviously the, the main thing we're, we're addressing, I get that, but I'm just trying yeah. to understand the relationship and your expectations of what this relationship is or isn't. If I were talking to him, because he doesn't know you're pregnant right now, right? I'm right. trying to no figure idea. out like what he thinks this relationship is or isn't, because you know you you speak very highly of him, you speak very highly of the relationship, you know, but it also yeah. doesn't sound like it's actually a relationship. Like, do you know how he feels about you? Are you confident in that? Yeah, I am confident in that. You are, and how does he feel about you? Well, I think he really likes me. I think he really cares about me. Okay. That's that's amazing. I also <laughs> I'm scared he might have like a wife. You think he or has a something w- down there. In <laughs> what where makes he's from. what makes you think that? So we spend a lot of time together, like every weekend together. Okay. And um he has someone that calls. And when they call, it's not they they just call like one time. It's like they'll call again and again and again and again. Like 10 times in a row. I just don't know who else would be calling that many times in a row. Have you asked him? No, I ignore it. I know that's my own fault, but I literally like will be sitting there and (laughs) I'll hear it ring every time and he'll silence it. And I'll just like go on with the conversation. Like I heard nothing. Yeah, you're right. He's probably married. Yeah. Or has a girlfriend. Who else would call 10 times over and over or multiple texts if they didn't think they had the right to? Unless, you know, he has a stalker, I guess that's always an option, but like, what's more likely, (laughs) you know, that he has some like random stalker that just can't seem to let him go because he's so wonderful, or he's a seasonal worker who's driven up to the Midwest to do some farming and sending money to his family. Yeah, that's uh, super accurate. (laughs) Yeah. So clearly you're not necessarily good at communication. Yeah, that is very true. Yes, you are right. I mean, you know what you need to do. You know, you have to tell them. But it's good that you're preparing yourself for the fact that if he is in a relationship, so you don't even know if he has kids. What what do you know about this guy? I do. I do know that. I know he has two kids. He has two kids. Who did he have kids with? Well, that I don't know. They're two different people. I know that. Okay, so what you do know is that this wonderful guy, he's has kids with two different people. Why aren't you asking these questions? You can't possibly know him because you don't ask him questions. Well, I I think I might get scared to know the answer. Well, that should tell you something. And listen, you seem like a really sweet person and you're pregnant and I'm not trying to come down on you too hard here because I just want you to like, take care of yourself and the baby but like if we're right with our fears that he's in a relationship and has kids then like you know that's also on you too you know like you don't get to just play the like well i didn't know card and naive you're allowing this to happen and you're pretending it's not and that's on you you know and that's a reflection of your character because despite this very sweet and endearing smile that you have and you seem like a really nice and sweet person you know the difference between white, right and wrong. And this is a little bit of selfishness on your part to say, well, I like him. We have a good thing. I just don't want to know what's going on in his world because I enjoy his company. And so even though his wife's 
blowing up up and we're sitting next to each other watching a rom-com together. I'm just going to pretend that this isn't happening. Oh, this sounds horrible when you say it like that. <laughs> well, you know, you have to face some reality here because you've been living yeah, a little yeah. bit of delusion. You're, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, the good news is you are, you did get pregnant by a man who seems to be willing to like go work for his family, you know? Yes, that's true. Yeah. The main reason I think I'm scared to tell him is because I think, well, just like basically what you've been saying is I don't want things to change. So like, I don't want to communicate anything. Yeah. But unfortunately, things kind of have changed. I know. I know. I know. Do you feel prepared to be a single mom? Yeah, I know my like my family and like my friends, like they're going to be so, so excited. Like I, I will have like a great support system. Like, that's amazing. No matter what. So, you know, maybe this is just a blessing that you get to be a mom. Have you always wanted to be a mom? I have. Yeah. All right. So congratulations. That's yeah. incredible. I don't know if this guy is going to step up, but listen, you got to tell him. You got to communicate. And there's no, I don't know, there's no magic way. You're just going to sit him down and be like, I'm pregnant. And you're the father. I'm going to go ahead and guess that not much is going to change. You might have to prepare yourself for a conversation of him suggesting that you maybe not go through with the pregnancy. More than anything, I want you to be confident in your decision and what you want to do with this pregnancy before you communicate with him. Because you're not in a relationship, this guy, you don't even know who this guy is. He is a stranger. He's a stranger to you because you've allowed him to be a stranger to you because you refuse to ask very basic questions. And since you're not asking questions, what you are doing is inserting your ideal version of him in your head. You have come up with a story of who he is. And instead of asking him tough questions, you're like, I don't know, I'll just, I'll just um, imagine he's someone different. And so I just want you to be confident in that decision before you tell him, because you, you don't really owe him anything other than, you know, you need to tell him, but you don't owe him anything other than just telling him, I guess. And then hopefully he steps up and wants to do the right thing and be involved. But yeah, I think you're right. Let me ask you this. Like, are you planning on no matter what having this baby? Yes. Okay, great. So how do we want to tell him? Oh God. (laughs) Sometimes I wish I didn't have to, but I know I do. You do. No, we, know. We, we know this. We, we, we know that you love, and I say this with love, avoiding reality and living in delusion. Yeah. Wow. Yes, that's true. Again, I'm glad that you're happy and I'm glad that you get to be a mom, but this is a crazy situation that thank God you are feeling the way you're feeling about this and thank God that you're seeing this as a positive and thank God the worst thing that happened is you got to be a mom. Because you being so willing to not ask the obvious questions and then inserting your own kind of delusion and escaping reality is very dangerous for you. And you really need to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking text them. I'm pregnant. I mean, I don't, we, I don't know. Do you, like, you're not in a relationship. This is not some sort of happy union. This is not like you two have been talking about getting pregnant and now you're going to like have him come home and light some candles and like hide the pregnancy results and be like, surprise, we're pregnant. Like, that's not the situation you got yourself in. So I don't think you need to do some sort of like (laughs) big gesture. You're just like hit him with the fucking truth. I'm pregnant. Would that take off some anxiety too of like feeling like you have to kind of almost brace for impact or plan how you're going to say it or sit him down? Like, what is the easiest thing for you to do? Just shoot off a text? With the results. This is not a drill. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. Maybe it's best because I was like, I want to know his like initial reaction, but maybe I don't want to know that. We're going to text him right now. That's what we're going to do because I don't know. I can't. I don't (laughs) think you're going to do it. uh, I don't know. Anytime soon. Yeah. I was supposed to do it last weekend. No, let's just do it right now. We're not going to get off the phone. Oh my, no, I can't. Why? I can't. Why can't you? Text him. Why? I just feel like I'd rather tell him in person. Would you have, would you be comfortable saying like, I have something I really need to talk to you about. When can I see you? Yes. But we're not going to let you get off the phone. I mean, you can <laughs> hang up, but until you at least let him know that there's something to be talked about so that you, to hold yourself accountable. I need you to understand just how, and again, I say this with love, how nuts it was for you to sit next to a guy 
that you are in this relationship with and have his, what we now assume is wife, girlfriend, or two baby mamas or whatever it is to blow him up and you just pretend it's not happening is, <laughs> yeah. is delusion. You're a Jedi Knight when it comes to avoiding this shit. I have every confidence in the world, your ability to make excuses for yourself and not bringing up and, and tell yourself why it just wasn't the right time and yada, yada, yada. You need help. You need someone like us or some, like a, or whatever <laughs> to just to pull yeah. that bandaid off. And if that bandaid isn't, I'm pregnant, it's, hey, when are you available to talk? I have some r really important news to share with you. Because then when you do see him, <laughs> if you're not brave enough to bring it up, he will. Yes. He will. Yeah. Oh, boy. And then you'll have to decide whether you're going to lie to him and make up some story or just fucking tell him. I'm not a good liar. So whip, that. whip, whip, well, that's good. Whip out that phone <laughs> and text him. When are you free to talk? I have some very important news to share. But we already have plans on Saturday. <laughs> At but least then the he point. knows on Saturday that you have to talk about this. I want him to stop what he's doing and come over and force you to tell him. This is a big moment in your life. This Yeah, it is. Huge. <laughs> no, and I'm not even like the fact that you're pregnant. It's like is... one of the scariest things I've done. Totally. Yes. Like, but like yeah. having to tell him. Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, but like I can't stress enough how lucky you are that this is the situation you find yourself in because it could be much, much worse. Your ability and willingness to avoid reality and lie to yourself and and live in this delusion is problematic and it's going to hurt a lot of people including yourself yeah it does and you are lucky that right now all that has happened is you've been gifted the miracle of of having a baby and knowing that and, and with the fact that you've always wanted to be a mother and the fact that you no know, regardless of what he does you have a loving family where you feel safe and supported cuz you're incredibly lucky to have that and yeah your continuation on this behavior is going to lead to you putting yourself and the people you love, and that's going to include your child in, in nine months, and you're going to put them and yourself in problematic situations by a, continuing this behavior. So now that you are an expecting mother, you're not just doing this for yourself. You're doing this for you and your child and all the people around you. And I, you're not going to solve this problem by sending a text. You, you, I highly encourage you to seek out therapy and talk to your therapist <laughs> and say, I do this thing yeah. I really want to work on. Can we talk about why I do this? Probably some attachment style, you know, you know avoid it. Sounds like it. Um, but either way, you need to, this is something that you're going to have to really work on because it's clearly not easy for you. Okay, so I just need to text him and let him know. Let's do it right we now. Have to talk. Let's do it right now. Holy shit. It's going to be okay. I promise. <laughs> uh, when are you free to talk? I know we have plans, but are you available beforehand? I have something serious I need to talk to you about. Yes. I'm having a hard time even typing. It's okay. This should not be this hard for me. It's okay. It's a big thing. Yeah. It's scary. I can't imagine anything that would be harder for me than like navigating something so unknown and new like that's really difficult and like I think you'll do it and you'll get through it and I think I really think like this will be like a call to action of like taking care of yourself in new ways because it's like developing yourself as a role model starts now go ahead send yes <laughs> yes so can we see it can we see the text <gasps> there we go all amazing. right amazing good I did job send it. good job <laughs> Holy shit. We're so proud of you. I could cry. That's a lot. Let it out. Yeah. Also, maybe after you get out this call, car, like cry. What scares you the most? Well, now that you've called me out on everything, I, I didn't want to tell him because like, like you said, I've literally been living in delusion and I wasn't, I'm not ready to leave that yet. So. Well, you're pregnant. <laughs> Yeah. And it's time for you to not, you know? And well, I'm, I'm not in delusion about that. But like, let's just think practically. Like, what's the worst that can happen? He gets upset. He asks you to have an abortion and you don't want one. The worst thing that can happen is like, instead of having sex with this guy off and on for the next four months before he goes back home, you lose that because he handles himself in a way that is not what we want. But I don't actually see him doing that. I, I don't know how he's going to react in the short term, but I expect him to be around. 
I don't expect him necessarily always to be honest because he's, that, well, I don't know, fuck, I don't know. I mean, you don't ask him any questions. I don't, I don't know what he's going to say. No, yeah, I don't. I just like live in the moment. Who have you talked to about this? Um, I have one friend that I've told everything to. Just one? Yeah, so far. What about mom and dad? Not yet. What? I didn't want to tell anyone before I told him. Why? I just out of respect, I guess. I guess, but you're not even confident in his reaction. Yeah. And as of now, right now, we're not even expecting him to raise this kid. We're expecting you and your support system to raise this kid. True. Listen, I whatever you're comfortable with, I just want you to feel like you have a community and I want you to feel safe and I want you to feel supported and whoever that is that is going to support you, I want you to not feel alone because you must feel so alone right now. You have this one friend. If it's not going to be him, I want people checking in on you, asking how you're doing, you know, giving you the love that you deserve. So like whoever that is, I tell them. You know, yeah, don't tell the world it is early, but this is clearly going to be on your mind and it's going to be consuming you and you don't want to lie to people why you're so consumed. And if these are people that you are confident are going to be there for you, then you should be able to tell them. Yeah, that's true. Have low expectations of him. I don't, you know, because we just, we don't know. We don't know anything about him and you don't know anything about him and you don't know how he's going to handle this. I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't respond today or takes all day. You know, you've never, ever asked him for anything. Yeah. I don't think you really are waiting to tell him in person. That's just a a way to avoid doing it. You know, as difficult as it was, it was pretty easy for you to send that text. It's 10 times harder to have him show up and be like, hey, because he's going to show up and he's going to, you're going to go into your routine, your routine of like him just pretend, you know, like, what are we doing today? And just living in the moment and pretending nothing is going on. And it's going to be very easy for you to be like, now is not the right time. Oh, he just texted me. Oh. What did he say? What did he say? He just said, okay. Okay. That was it. What, what, Excuse me, sir. What's did, your Did you ask a question? Oh, oh, he responded again. He said, we will work something out and make time. Okay. Okay. But like, tonight, I would say, I, said, I know we're both working a lot, but I have to talk to you about something important. Okay. Now reply with, <laughs> when are you free? Like, thank you. But it is really important. But okay. when are you for sure? Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Oh, I'm having a heart attack. Oh, God, me too. What do you say? What do you say? Or if, if it's so important, we don't have to wait. I can go there tonight. Yes. 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 Holy shit. Whoa. That's a good sign. This is good. He's Yeah, I like it. Holy shit. You <laughs> asked something direct and here he is stepping up. See, there we go. One thing that like my friends at my friend that knows, she said, of anyone this could have happened to you with, this is the best person it could have happened with. So I don't know we'll if she's see. right or wrong. Yeah, we don't but... know. We don't know. But everything you do know about this guy, you like. He treats you well. You know, he seems nice. Like, I wish yeah. I wish you would ask more questions about him. He's definitely a cheater. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> what I don't if know. I'm wrong? Maybe that's his call. Maybe you are. That's the thing. You don't know. You need to start no. asking these questions. <laughs> yeah. If you tell them, that's just a big first step and congratulations. But if you can, now would be also a great time to be like, can I, can I ask you a question? And like, honestly, like I'm already assuming the worst. Don't like accuse them, but just say like, who's blowing you up? Because I'm assuming you have a wife. And if you do, it's fine. Again, I'm fully prepared to like raise this kid on my own. I have my support system. I want you to be involved. I think you're the greatest guy in the world, but like I'm very scared and I'm very confused. And what do you think? Also, yeah. okay. I what if we have you responded yet? Not yet. Um but I will I'll I'll I I would I'll make a, it work for tonight. I, great. And I would can you send him a text right now and say thank you for making the time to be honest. I'm I'm really nervous. For this conversation or i'm scared why do you think i should say that because you are and you're being honest but about know, how you feel then then we're both feeling nervous like do i want him to feel nervous too Good. i don't care or should i not care i don't know maybe i care too much you're about just being honest with feels. your feelings and you're pregnant and you have the right to be nervous and scared and you shouldn't have to do this alone so god forbid yeah. he's a little anxious all day and if that bothers him he can call you up and be like 
what's going on. And you can fucking tell them over the phone. Yeah, true. Like, I always feel like I'm the person who can handle anything. So I always worry so much about how the other person feels. And this how guy has, is, is, has left his home to work seasonally. This guy can handle. He's, he's already a parent of two kids. You, you know, he has experience. You don't. So let's text yeah. him. Thank you for making this a priority. To be honest, uh, I'm a little scared to have this conversation. Okay. I just said, thank you. I'm a little scared. I'll see you tonight. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> that, that okay? <laughs> Perfect. That's fine. Ay, ay, ay. Oh. Okay. It's well, gonna, this it's pro- like going to be okay. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> no, we know. <laughs> if I wasn't. <laughs> push to do it like I mean, this, you so. i honestly wouldn't have been shocked if you like didn't tell him until you were showing yeah the only thing that's been like really hard is like hiding that i can't drink so yeah. eventually he would have like caught on i think there's a really good ch- i mean i again unless he's like some asshole about it and just a prick and who knows because certainly guys can be that way but it sounds like you think he's a pretty good guy i'm optimistic yeah, that he, you're gonna feel yeah. a lot better after you tell him and hopefully when you do you know, remember that, that like, just like, just get to the truth. It's exhausting to live yeah. in denial. It's exhausting to lie to yourself. Well, just the way he responded to those texts, that, that also made me feel a little bit more at ease. Good. So, oh, okay. Just, just fucking tell him, you know? And then yeah. after you tell him, maybe tell mom and dad or, or a few more friends. I just want you to feel taken care of. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And be excited. You know, get to the place, tell whoever you need to tell so that you can enjoy being a mom and you can feel good about being pregnant, whether it's as a single mom or with this guy or whatever. But right now, your your energy is going to like, do I tell him? What do I do? And that's taking up your energy. It's energy that you should be investing in you and your child. Yeah. And and again, yeah, you're very right. It's not just you you're taking care of anymore. It's your your, it's your kids. So start now. Okay. All right. Well, he will know tonight because I know he's going to show up. Keep and us posted. He's instantly going to want to know. Yes. <laughs> send and us an email tomorrow. Send us an email tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. This is like we're proud of you. It's not this easy. Was huge, what, yes, really. it was very huge. So we're really proud of you. This is a big step. I'm glad that you're ta- you're 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 willing to listen to this tough love because again, I feel strongly that you got lucky with this outcome. As scary as it, I'm sure it is. That it could have been worse. And if you don't address this uh, willingness to avoid basic questions and conversations and just live in a lie, it's, it's going to affect you. You're, you're not going to be as lucky in the future. And, and you, you are risking not only hurting yourself, but the people you love. And that's going to eventually include your child. So yeah. take it seriously. Thank your lucky stars that this, this is the outcome that you're dealing with now. Look into therapy. Address this issue and move forward and and enjoy being a mom thank you so much all right we can't wait for an update congratulations (laughs) thank you all right take care all you hungry people out there if you don't have the time to shop plan meals you know maybe you're you're just not the most creative whiz in the kitchen well have you checked out hello fresh if you haven't you're missing out because hello fresh is bringing you some of the tastiest meals with the highest qualities of ingredients right to your door you forego the grocery store no more meal planning what do i make this week what do i make today i don't know let hello fresh take all the hard work all the planning all the shopping out of the way and you just get to make tasty delicious meals you can make in 20 to 30 minutes i mean most of the meals that they have and again the best part is they have the freshest of ingredients with hello fresh hello fresh takes the stress out of meal time by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your doorstep this fall skip the extra trip to the grocery store and have dinner ready in no time with America's number one meal kit and if you've been enjoying every plate well no surprise they are owned by hello fresh When you get HelloFresh, you know you're getting top-notch produce since it travels from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days. That's fresh, people. Take your pick from 40 weekly recipes that suit your style to veggie, to family-friendly, to fit and wholesome. I love HelloFresh because I suck at grocery shopping, and oftentimes by the end of a long day, that's the last thing you want to do. So coming home to a HelloFresh box outside of your door, you know you're going to have the best meals that week, and you didn't even have to drive anywhere. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50VIALL and use code 50VIALL for 50% off plus 15% off your next two months. That's a lot of savings. 
You got to check it out now. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50, V-I-A-L-L. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Drizzly is here to be your partner in parties meeting. They're here to help you take the work, all the grunt work out of the get together so you can be a confident host and actually party at your own party. Whether you're drinking Sky or uh, Aperol Spritz or Campari's or maybe like that wild turkey. Well, listen, Drizzly has so many options. Maybe you're a wino who loves to like just check out different regions of the world. You can do that. Maybe you love your craft brews. Well, uh, Drizzly has that too. Whatever you're drinking, whatever you want to serve at your party, Drizzly, chances are Drizzly has it uh, with delivery to your doorstep when you need it. And maybe you're not even throwing a party. Maybe it's just, you know, you have a, you're, you're cooking a nice steak dinner and you're, you want to crack open a bottle of wine, but ugh, you forgot to pick one up at the grocery store. Well, Drizzly is there to make sure that you can finish cooking. You can keep your loafers and PJs on. You don't have to go out to the grocery store. It'll just deliver right to your door to crack open and be ready where dinner is served. Or maybe you get invited to a party and you can't make it, but you want to say, hey, thanks for inviting me. Sorry I couldn't make it. Here is a nice bottle of whatever. So many different situations where Drizzly can help you save the day. Drizzly is the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep when you want it. Drizzly is the go-to app for drink delivery. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com. Drizzly.com. How's it going? Hey, I'm good. Um, I'm Taylor. I'm 22. And I found out that my boyfriend was having an emotional affair with his cousin. Okay. So you already know. Yes. Okay. We're not even wondering. And cousin? Yeah. So even after I found out, he still was saying that it was his cousin. But then later he clarified that they were raised as cousins and that they're not actually like blood related. What does that mean? Is this like, you know, I grew up with like family friends and we called like them like aunt and uncle, even though they were just family friends. I think that's exactly what it is. I don't really know the dynamic. I've obviously never met her. Um, She lives in a different state but it's in his hometown where all of his family lives. So I think that, yeah, just like one of those family friends that you call your cousin, who's not really your cousin. How did you find out? Cause it sounds like he was like, Hey, I had an emotional affair with my cousin. And then he, did he lead with that? No. So I found out on my own because I had seen in his um, Snapchat best friends list, a girl's name. And I asked who it was and he said it was his cousin. But then the next day, I just had this like gut feeling. So I had asked to see his phone. I went into his text. I went into the recently deleted and I saw her name. And I thought to myself, you know, if this is your cousin, why are you deleting your text with her? So I opened them up and just like immediately I knew. And then I read through all of them. And so there were no secrets. Cousin was the cover. Cousin was the cover. Yeah. So he was like, hey, I used to call her my cousin when we were kids. He clearly doesn't see her that way. But when you call him out, he's like, oh, it's my cousin. Thinking that you would be like, oh, there's just no way he's fucking his cousin. Yeah. Well, so he kept trying to go with that. And I was trying to tell him, I was like, that's worse. If you're saying that this is your cousin, that's worse because that's gross. Fucking weird. If it's your cousin and you're talking to her this way. (laughs) What was he saying? What was going on? Like, what's the worst of it? The worst of it, I would say, is when she asked about me and said, you know, like, what about your girlfriend? And he was like, oh, yeah, she's around. And she said, he, she said, define that. And he said, like, we're still actively dating. And she was like, OK, well, you know, I just want to be respectful. Obviously, we're flirting and I don't want to overstep any boundaries. And he was like, no, it goes both ways. Like, don't even worry about it. We have to have conversations like this. Like, they're important. That I thought was the worst, even over like the sexual and like explicit things that were obviously like inappropriate. What were those? It's just like gross things. Like they were talking about seafood and stuff. And she goes, Oh, I only take one kind of raw meat. And he was like, Oh Lord. Like just, it's just so gross to even think about. And then they were like funny how like her like (laughs) sexting is like always gross and weird to everyone listening or reading it other than the two people involved. Yeah, I have the yeah, older. like so embarrassing. You know, like it's just, it's just kind of funny. I mean, it's not funny for you, but it's right. just. And in well, that I moment, mean, even when I was reading it, I was like, "How is she not embarrassed?" Like saying this. Well, have you ever sexted with anyone? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I imagine you'd be horrified <laughs> if you went back. I, I get horrified when I go back like three three months and read a caption on Instagram. 
<laughs> now imagine Even going back moment, and rereading feel, like, like like sexting messages with your cousin. <laughs> sure, yeah, <laughs> with your cousin. <laughs> Well, so all jokes aside, where are you at right now? Like, I, I mean, this is a fascinating story and I'm sorry you're going through this, but like, what, how can we help? I guess at first I was wondering if I should, you know, give him another chance and I do kind of want to. So I guess the advice I need is like, do you think that someone can work past something like this? And if there's a way to really build back trust, obviously it was like a big ego hit for me. So I don't know if I can like, overcome it so to speak well can people get through this sure Any, anything's possible people have gotten through worse but how did he respond to you finding out so his response was a lot different i there have been a lot of lies in him doing things behind my back throughout the relationship and usually he's just immediately defensive even blames me or just like doesn't think he's done anything wrong but as soon as i found out and confronted him he immediately was like apologetic remorseful like i could tell that he was really truly disgusted with himself but then is like, are you just sorry that you were caught, though? Or are you actually sorry that you did it? And what are these other examples of him lying? There's been a lot of like just hanging out with girls behind my back and going over to their house. Like nothing inappropriate that I know of. But if you feel the need to lie about it, I think that clearly that means there's something inappropriate to the relationship. If you can't feel comfortable telling your girlfriend what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, where there's smoke, there's usually fire. And what's your confidence level that you know the full truth? 70%. Are you being generous? Gun to your head. Your life's on the line. And you have to say yes or no, whether you there's more to his story or you know everything. And your life is literally dependent on it. What do you say? Yeah, I'd say I'm not confident, confident at all. Okay. Because even afterwards, I like I said in the moment, I said, now is the time for you to come clean about like anything else that you're hiding. If you need to confess anything else, like if we're going to rebuild, we need to start with like a fresh canvas. You need to be honest with me. He said that he had told me everything. A couple of days later, I found out that he had been hanging out with another girl behind my back. There you go. So how long have yeah. you been get? How old is he? He is 22. We are only two days apart. Okay. So maybe, you know, it doesn't sound like he's just ready to be in a relationship. He likes having yeah. a girlfriend, but doesn't want to be a boyfriend. Yeah. You ask, can people get through this? Sure. But they really have to be committed to it. Therapy, individual therapy, couples therapy. And I honestly, just as a 22 year old guy who it sounds like he just kind of wants to like fuck around and date. And, and that honestly, like at this day and age is more common than being a committed relationship. Like, are you trying to get married in a year or two? No. <laughs> okay. How long have you been dating him? Uh, two years. Okay. I, I just think while people can get through this, I just feel like maybe you both as individuals and this relationship might not be ready for the type of work that would be required to make this work. Right. You know? And yeah. I sounds like he just has some general growing up to do. I agree. And you might just be better off letting him grow up on his own and revisiting this relationship in the future. Right. Rather than like holding yourself emotionally hostage and then wondering if he's being honest. And then, you know, what ha usually happens is then you're going to be so invested in watching him or making sure he's being honest that he's going to be doing God only what. And you're really not focusing on your own needs and what you want or exploring other options and seeing what's out there. Yeah. That's definitely my biggest concern for if we stay together is that I'm always going to be worried about what he's doing. I'm going to be up to like 3 a.m watching his location and making sure he's where he says he is. And I just, I don't want to be in a relationship like that where I have to constantly be questioning my partner and like always worried if he's telling me the truth. Cause I just don't think that I'll ever be able to trust him that he's being honest with me for a while at least. Yeah. And so when you break up with them, I think you should say, say something like, listen, I know you're not telling me everything and I'm not here to try to get you to tell everything. I'm just telling you, I know. And I just, I don't think you're ready to be a boyfriend. I just think we should break up. I never, I don't think I can trust you. He's going to fight tooth and nail. And he's, you know, maybe he will come clean by you saying, I know I, you haven't told me everything because clearly you said you did. Then I found out you didn't. And even if you are, I have no reason to believe you. So either one, he will come clean or two, he'll just, he'll get mad at you and be like, how could you do this? Or how could you not believe me? And you'd be like, well, I mean, yeah. is, is that a rhetorical question? Or do you want me to actually answer that? And like, the reason I can't believe you 
is because you have a pattern of lying. You don't have a pattern of telling me the truth. Yeah. I mean, like the messages you found were pretty damning. Yeah. Because there are people who can have affairs, right? And they can know they're doing something fucked up. Maybe they're just, again, scratching some sort of trauma they had in the past or, you know, some validation. To your point, you know, worse than maybe if you found like a couple nudes they sent back and forth, he was like disrespecting you and your relationship and talking bad about you to someone else. You know, there are people who have affairs who they could sleep with someone and then the person they're sleeping with having an affair with could maybe talk shit about their partner and that partner would like actually like almost to their other person's surprise defend them. He was talking bad about you. And he yeah. was talking bad about your relationship and he was telling her that you don't matter and that you're not yeah. important and that you're not a priority. And I don't know how you come back from that because right. it's, it, it, if you caught him sending nudes or even found that he had slept with her and that's all you knew, like there's a world where, you know, maybe he's just like, I don't know. I just, I need, I, I don't know why I do this. I feel eh, like it's just physical and not that it would make you feel better in the, in the moment. But to, to know that he spoke bad about you, but he could have had an affair with someone else and never brought you up. Right. Because a lot of people have affairs with people they know they're in a relationship with. They just don't talk about it. You know, there's two yeah. people who are like, you know, I mean, there's all different types of affairs. It's hard for me to come back from what you found about how he talked about you and your relationship. Yeah. And he's going to the city that she lives in next week for a couple of days. And he said, oh, I'm just going to visit family. And I said, well, apparently she is your family. So that doesn't really make me feel that much better. (laughs) I'm so and I realize like I've just met you, but I'm so fucking mad at this man. And I feel very protective over you. And like that is just unbelievably disrespectful. Like it's so bad. It's it's so prison, immediate prison. Like that is unacceptable. That is so fucking shitty. And like. I, and I get it's so easy to be outside of a relationship and to be like, yep, break up with him. Simple. And then you're in it and you have all these memories and, you know, his family and like you have like falling asleep in his arms. All the things like I get it is totally different when you were like in a relationship to end it. But like that being said, like he is doing some shit that is just so unacceptable and not OK. And it makes me so concerned that like were you to stay in this relationship, like you'd be putting yourself through emotional hell and really at risk for like setting yourself up for accepting way less than you deserve. Yeah. And something that one of my friends pointed out is that the behavior is escalating because at first it was just, you know, liking girls pictures on Instagram. Then it was hanging out with girls behind my back. And now it's like a virtual affair. The only thing to go up from there is a full blown, like physical affair. Uh And that's just that, you know, of. yeah, that's just, you know, of. and like Nick always says, like, you can fuck up your life. Like, I think sometimes in situations like this, it's kind of important to like scare the shit out of yourself and be like, You can fuck up your life. You can waste like really good years that you could be spending like with your friends, getting to know yourself, with your family, like giving so much emotional energy and attention to somebody who's like disrespecting you like that can happen. Like the stakes are real here. And so like, do you feel like you are because at this point, it seems like you're pretty on the side of like breaking up is like the should. But do you think you will? I don't know. But to your point of like fucking up my life, it is my last year in college. And that's one of my biggest concerns. Like, am I going to waste the last year in college before I go off, you know, to get like a real big girl job? And this is my last time to be having fun, you know, going to football games, meeting people. And I feel like I'm going to be wasting it being worried about what he's doing. Yeah, don't waste it. Don't waste it. Literally don't waste it. If you're going in already thinking that, It's just going to you're just going to keep confirming that throughout the year. Every time you reach a milestone, you're going to probably be thinking, I could have gone to this with someone else or I could have brought a friend or I could have like some of my best experiences in college were not with a significant other. It was with my friends and the people who actually stayed with me into adulthood. Yeah. And most of my experience so far has been spent with him and his friends because I really only have kind of one best friend out here because I met him right when I moved halfway across the country for school and just immediately started hanging out with him and immersing myself into his friend group. I just don't want all of my memories from college to be of that because I just, I don't see longevity in our relationship. So I guess I think I am on the side of breaking up. I kind of was giving it time. My mom's coming today and three of my best friends from home are coming next week to kind of be here for me. And 
Oh my God. Just give me Break some like, up... outside perspective. We've had a crazy day of uh, getting people to make some very difficult choices. Well, on the call with us, I feel like we should break up with them right now together. I think we should, too. Your mom's on her way. Do you have a support system on their way? The thing is, do you think over text is the best way to... This guy cheated on you. I don't give a fuck what he this deserves. This man is talking yeah, about raw meats with his cousin. Yeah. How gross. I can type up, a te- I can type up something and either text it to him. <laughs> what if we just go, like, we're broken up? Have fun fucking we're your done. cousin. I think we're all in agreement, okay. right, that the healthy choice is for all the reasons you just mentioned, is to break up. But you yeah. recognize that's just tough to do. You've been involved with this guy, so what, all we care about is you breaking free and being able to follow through with this difficult choice because it's hard to do. That's our only priority, right? Our priority is not to do it right. in a way where things are amicable. That's right. not the priority. You know, he, he hasn't earned that from you. And so I don't think we should feel any I know bottom any line, like, guilt. I deserve better. You come across as, like, fed up and tired, and you just know the answer. You called us to get a little, like, to emotion. Get accountability. Yeah, support, or whatever. Push. But, yeah. like, you know, you're not confused by what you need to do. And you don't even sound almost particularly sad about it, you know? And uh, well, nor should you be. You're going to be sad, and it's going to be a process, and you're going to experience a lot of emotions. But... For all the reasons you just talked about, you know the right, you know what's the right thing for the relationship, for you, for your future. You have all these reasons of what you don't want to regret, but you just need that push. And there's just no better time than now. And just like you said, rip the bandaid off. You have mom coming in. You got friends coming in, keep you preoccupied, to keep you busy, to get you out there. Like, let's just do it. I think yeah, we should just say we're broken time. up and block them. Oh, my God. Well, I, what, See, what, I agree. Why are we so? Why are we so worried about like this fucking guy? We're, I'm not worried. I just think we might need to like round it out a little bit more. Why? One thing: we both have a class on campus today at the same time. Oh, he let's wait until after the class. Me. What's he gonna do? Like raise hell at class? No, no, no. We don't have the same class. We'll just both be on campus. Oh, can you go with your friend? Do you know anybody in your class? Can you like? walk with someone i mean are, are you when you it's say find you are you today. are you worried like are you worried that he would do anything no 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 okay well you just think he would try to debate you mm-hmm. yeah like he'd be like really you're gonna block me and like yes. not have a conversation yes. with me yes 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 be like listen i just I'm... say yes i have to go to class yeah and you're like i am right. tired of pretending that this whole situation isn't fucking crazy and i am tired of pretending i have given you way more than my time I, I just, I don't feel like having a co- co- crazy conversation and I don't believe anything you're going to say. So there's no point in talking. Right. And I wish I'd done this a lot sooner. I won't get anything out of it. Yeah. The best thing you can do is not be petty and mad. The best thing you can do is just be as calm as fuck and just be like, hey, listen, I'm just really busy. This has just been a long time coming. And I just, I'm not going to believe anything you're going to say anyway. So like, there's just no point, but I do wish you all the best and it's been great. If you're going to cheat on your partner multiple times and then have an emotional affair with someone that you refer to as your cousin, you don't get any consideration, you know? And right now this is all about protecting yourself. And this is about how you're going to go over this. And I don't give a fuck about him. He doesn't, he, he doesn't deserve it. I don't know that I really give a fuck about him or his feelings either, to be honest. I think it's just an internal thing of thinking that I should be nice i don't know why i think that he wasn't like well, you're, you're nice, not nice yourself to you're, out of the prison of nice you're a nice person and that's good that you are considerate but someone else out there is going to be more deserving of this consideration and right now i want you to enjoy your final year i want you to make a ton of friends i want you to meet a bunch of guy, a bunch of guys fuck around and have fun and uh, the way i kind of look at it is like vanderpump rules i'm season one stassi stuck with jacks and my bow is still out there somewhere and that's what I tell myself. There I don't we know go. You, I know you're doing a rewatch. I don't know if yeah. you're that far in. Yeah, but. we are. We are. Uh, well, I don't know if we got into yeah. Bo, but we know she's. Don't be stuck with Jax. Yeah. Just go have some fun. Explore some life. Like, to your point, you inv- I, and I know what it's like to invest your entire college career into a relationship that as ultimately doesn't work out. And like, again, I have a great life and I made some great friends, but I would have done it differently if I could have done it differently. And I would have had more fun in college than I had. and and. The fact that you have this foresight and you still have a year left, don't waste it. Yeah, you're right. All right. Well, we're going to text him right now together. What a day. Okay. What a day. I'm nervous.
Uh, don't be nervous. I'm nervous about having to tell my mom what happened. Why? Because I haven't told her, and she. Well, my mom loves everybody, so she loves him. He's come and st- I. From Does California mom know that she wanted? That he wants to fuck his cousin? Yeah, she won't love him after that. Okay. I don't want her to be sad for me. Well, Let her be sad for you. Yeah. Let her take you out for dinner. Have a girl's day. Drink some wine. Go on Hinge. Be unhinged. This is what you deserve. Okay. Or, or, yeah, you could be sad or you could say to your mom what you said to us. Honestly, mom, like I am sad and I'm going to grieve and I don't know how I'm going to process this. But I do know that I am excited to enjoy my final year of college. I'm excited to make a bunch of friends that, quite honestly, I wish I would have done uh, earlier in college. I'm really excited about no longer having to worry if this guy, if this guy is fucking around behind my back. So while I'm sad, yes, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm actually more excited about the future than anything. Okay, you're right. Put a positive spin on it. Because in reality, it is a positive thing for me. Oh, yeah. All right. So how how mean do we want to be? I kind of want to be mean. I kind of wanted to say we're we broken. Mean. I just want to say I've decided we're broken up. Have fun next weekend. Okay. Yeah. And there's nothing you can say to change my mind. Yeah. You know what? I actually like that. I've decided we're broken up. Uh, nothing okay. you can say can change my mind. I wish you all the best. Please respect my decision. I wish you well. In hell. <laughs> I, I do. I wish you all the best. I do kind of like, I actually don't be petty. You're being petty by not being petty. By firing right. him like the HR person. Like, yeah. Just be kind of like. Not giving too much into it. Yeah. Just very kind of like, what the fuck? And then block him. That's easy. I already haven't blocked on it. I already haven't blocked on like all social medias. What? Why? It's just not on text. <laughs> because when I found out, I blocked him on everything except for text. And just kind of never unblocked him because I think in the back of my head, I knew how, how long are we going to make it? We got to be rid of this guy. If he's yeah, already I... blocked on everything, that is your sign right there. Yeah. Send this. All right. So what do we got so right. far? Read it back. I have decided we're broken up. Nothing you can say will change my mind. I wish you all the best, but please respect my decision. Take care. Take care. Period. Love you. Kisses XO. No, I'm just kidding. I'm ah! okay, take <laughs> care. Period. Taylor, I'm going to come to college with you. You're fun. All right. Well, let us know when you <laughs> let us know when you send it. I'm just gonna send it right now. Otherwise, right. I probably won't yeah. hold myself accountable to do it. There you go. Send it. Do I send it and then block, or do I wait for a text back? No, block. Immediate block. Okay. Okay. Woo-hoo! All right. Did you block him? Did you block him? Yeah, I blocked. All right. Great. Now delete his number. Oh, you're right. So that I can't see the contact. Also, just as a heads up, you might have to also block him on your iMessage on your laptop. I had. A man who did not take the blocking kindly and continued to FaceTime me on my laptop until I did it on there too. So I've or, gotten them through on my watch before. So yeah, mm-hmm. you go on my watch and my iPad. I don't yeah. know why they don't sync. Yeah. That, don't literally a safety risk. I'm like, get him off of my screen. All right, congratulations. No, you're single. How do you, how does it feel? Oh, you're single. What are you gonna do tonight? Oh, fun. With mom. <laughs> Woo. Pick up my mom from the airport. Yeah, baby. <laughs> go to class. Well, congratulations. You have so I'm Thank so you. excited for you. What yeah. what, a, what an exciting journey you have ahead of you. I'm excited. Why don't you go like like get on the apps tonight? Why don't you go ahead it. and make a, an account? What what, That's what, what, I said. what dating profile? I said get on Hinge. Be on Hinge. Make a make a make a profile today. Okay, I'll do Hinge. I've never tried Hinge before. You'll probably find them on I there. I can't use Tinder. I'm banned from Tinder. Wow, <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> what did you do? Because I used it before I was 18, way back when. Okay, uh, that'll get to it. Uh, then they okay. just perma ban you for life. But also, if you feel been... sad at any point in the coming weeks, that doesn't mean you made the wrong decision. Exa- yeah. And also, yeah. like, I, I could just like feel the icky feelings or else you'll feel them tenfold down the line. You should read this book. Don't take yeah. your ex happy birthday. It's full of nuggets to get over people. I and have start... it. Oh, you do? Well, yeah. go reread it. Remind yourself. I will. When you get out there. There'll be a lot of nuggets in there. But there's that chapter, just because you're sad doesn't mean they're special. Because yes, it's okay to be sad to Amanda's point. It's okay to miss him. It's okay to, you know, wish he was there. It's okay to want to call him and tell him a story. You did spend two years with this guy. He was an important part of your life. He didn't deserve you, but it's, it's natural to feel those feelings. But that does not mean that he's worth your time or that you made the wrong decision or that you re- should reconsider. It just means that you have a vo- an actual void to fill and you just haven't filled it yet, you know? And that's yeah. going to take some time. And you're going to go out and date and you're going to meet a lot of bad dates before you meet some good ones. But again, you're only 22. You've been in a relationship for two years. I hope for you 
that you do date a lot, a lot. You go out there, you meet a lot of people. I would focus on friendships right now. Like you said, don't make the mistake yeah. of falling in love with the first guy you go on a date and do the same thing with this new guy you do with the last guy. Yeah, I have that habit. Well, this is a time to really work on yourself, you know, because we all have things to work on ourselves. And clearly he has things to work on himself. That's his journey. But now there's an opportunity for you to figure out what choices I had to make in this past relationship that got me into this pickle. You know, did I obviously put up with too much? Did I not ask the right questions? Did I not listen to my gut? You know, do some, you know, the, now is a good time over the next month or so to, to really do some reflecting and just be pretty honest with yourself about things you want to work on. You have your whole life in front of you. Now is the time to make some mistakes, but just don't make the same mistakes over and over. Be a girl's girl over the next few months and really prioritize friendships and let the guys chase you. And if a guy falls in love with you and you like him, you know, takes, you know, just tell yourself, listen, yeah, it's okay to like him, but I still need to learn. And I'm just going to take my time with him. And if he's not willing to yeah. go at my pace and he's clearly not what I'm looking for. Right. Thank you guys so much. I definitely really needed the push because I know my friends will be honest with me, but I don't know. I think at the end of the day, they're always like, well, we'll respect your decision if you decide to stay. But I think what I needed is to be like, no, you don't deserve this. Yeah. Leave him. We won't respect that decision. Thank uh, you. I need that. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, give us an update in about a few weeks of where you're at and kind of how it's been. I will. Go on the fi Find a Friend apps. Bumble BFF? Yeah, Bumble BFF. Oh, yeah. I should try that. Prioritize okay. friendships right now. Find it's my all, friends. It's all about making friends right now. The boys will always be there. Yeah. I'm just going to focus on me. Me all and right. my friends. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. IQ bar. Amanda is somewhere in Europe, and chances are she's eating a IQ bar as we speak. There is a reason why Amanda only eats IQ bars. She's on an IQ bar only diet when she travels. I don't know if that's entirely true, but I we know that she loves them. She's, 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 her bag is overflowing with IQ bars. We love them too. It's just that Amanda is surviving off of them. I will say though, Amanda has turned us all onto IQ bar as well. And we have made it kind of part of our routine here, especially around like the three o'clock hour when we all need a little pick me up because you just get that sustainable energy. It fills you up with really good ingredients. And it doesn't matter like what our dietary restrictions are. If you're gluten free, keto, vegan, everyone can enjoy them. And we all have our favorite flavors. So get your hands off the banana nut. The wild bear is pretty good too. They all taste amazing. And you can get your snack on with having the comfort of knowing that you are eating something not only that is delicious, but good for you, packed with nutrients and protein and a bunch of stuff that your body craves. Refuel smarter with IQ Bar's ultimate sample pack. That's seven IQ Bars, four iMix sticks, and four IQ Joe sticks. And now our special podcast listeners get 20% off all IQ Bar products plus free shipping. To get your 20% off, just text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64,000 to get your discount. Again, text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64,000. That's FILES to 64,000. By texting 64,000, you agree to receive recurring automated marketing messages from IQ Bar. Message and data rates may apply. No purchase required. Terms apply. Available IQBar.com. Reply stop to stop. Help to help. Genevieve, I have a question for you. Okay. Did you know that an estimated 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away each year? And oh if that's God. not bad enough, most cleaning formulas are 90% water, which is super heavy to ship, leading to excessive carbon emissions. Plus, those products are often filled with nasty ingredients like chlorine and ammonia. It's just like a lose-lose situation for you, your home, the planet. I do not want to pay for water to be shipped to my house. I have plenty at home. Thank you. And I want to make sure that it is using natural but effective ingredients. And that's where Blue Land comes in. Because you can start out with like one of their starter kits. They have everything that you need from a general cleaner to a bathroom cleaner to a glass and mirror cleaner to hand soap. And then they give you little tablets with those beautiful, effective ingredients. You toss them in. You add the water. It foams up like a little science experiment. You mix it up. You use it. My house has never looked or smelled better. And the bottles are so pretty. I can just leave them out on the countertop. And then when I need more, I just order more tablets and they're shipped directly to my door. It's really incredible. And Allie's emotional. getting emotional right now. Blue Land has a special offer for our listeners right now. Get 15% off your first order by going to blueland.com slash V-I-A-L-L. You won't want to miss this. That's right. Blueland.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off. That's blueland.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off. How's it going? Hey, good. How are you? Good. What's your name? 
Uh, Jenna, and I'm 27. How can we help, Jenna? So I think I have feelings for my guy friend who might be moving to a different country, and I'm wondering if I should tell him. Okay, well, we're going to have to solve the case of think and might. So yeah. let, let's start with your feelings. Uh, why do you think you might have feelings for him? Because we've been friends for a long time. So since college, ran in the same friend group. I never really looked at him that way. We both dated other people. And recently, within the past like year, we've just been communicating a lot more, like pretty much every day, mostly texting. And then on the weekends, we'll go out with our group of friends. And he's a very flirty person. So I never really like looked too much into it. But recently, when we were out, I came home and was like, hmm, like maybe I'm starting to develop feelings. And so I'm wondering if it's just because of that constant communication or if it's something deeper. Or what does your gut tell you? I don't know. <laughs> That's the tricky part because he's very like supportive. Like he's everything that my ex wasn't. It sounds to me like this conversation was about you, well, us trying to figure out how you feel about him. And what I'm hearing for you is you trying to figure out how he feels about you. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit of both. But uh, let's focus on how you feel about him. Okay. Regardless of how he feels about you. So what does your gut tell you about how you feel about him? That it's nice and comfortable and something that I haven't really had before. And like, it's like a secure partner. And I feel like I tend to go for very emotionally unavailable people. Okay. And I like the fact that we've known each other for a long time and been friends, but... I guess I'm nervous of like, does he like me? Sure. Totally normal. Understandable. It's important to know our feelings. Of, and then, then we can worry about their feelings. We tend to focus too much on their feelings and not enough about our feelings. And you might get- Yeah, your, I read that in your book. Yeah, <laughs> but you might get an answer that makes the part about their feelings irrelevant depending on how you feel about the situation. Mm -hmm. So we waste a lot of time- doing that, let's focus on how you feel because how you feel is what matters most. And you'll get your answer about he, how he feels when you ask him or when you let him know. The simple answer is if we figure out that you in fact do have feelings that go beyond friendship with this guy, yeah, you fucking should let him know and then let him decide for himself what he wants to do with that information, you know, which might be, hey, you know, you're great, but I just don't feel the same. Also, the good news is, you know, as far as your ego is concerned, he has a built-in excuse, which is, oh, I would, but I'm moving, you know, some version of that. You know, you're great, mm -hmm. but oh God, I wish if only I wasn't moving, which at the end of the day will just be an excuse if he doesn't feel the same way as you feel. And also, if he's been friends with you for a long time, he's going to go through the kind of same confusing process. My gut, my, <laughs> it's just like, it doesn't really ever happen, I, ever. Of course it's happened. But rarely do I think in these situations, does one person say to the friend, hey, I think I have feelings for you. And the other person immediately says, oh my God, same. Like, it just- That's why I don't think I should tell him. Like, is it worth it? No, but like the or reason the, the, the reason why people don't say, oh my God, same, is, isn't because they always don't feel that same, is the default is to be noncommittal. He's going to have to process these emotions. Partly, he needs to know how serious you are about this you know so I, i'm just saying mm -hmm. you why would you tell him because as you've heard you me say and if you've read my book it's also in the book you're not really you're not just friends he ain't going to your kid's baptism he's not showing up to your wedding if you don't marry him and once he moves the re for all the reasons that you were spending all this time together and the reasons why your relationship has evolved and advanced to what it is today has a lot to do with proximity availability comfort and when he moves, you know, maybe initially at first you might keep in touch. Let's, this is assuming you don't confront him with your feelings. And yeah, he'll be in a new city and he won't have friends and he'll feel lonely. And you'll be a very easy and convenient person to reach out to to keep himself company. But like, you know, that's kind of just torture. Uh, but he'll certainly do mm -hmm. it once he starts making friends and once he starts going out there and dating, it'll slow down. Convince me why this isn't just like, you know, I've been singing for a while and I've been kind of bored and he's there and he's not bad or, you know, and on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, I'm pretty sure I love the guy to one being like, he's, I see him as a brother. Where do mm -hmm. you fall on the, uh, on the scale? Probably closer, like six, seven, maybe. Okay. Like, 
pretty high. I think something that you included in your email that feels maybe like relevant to include in the conversation is that like the how he always mentions that it's a one way plane ticket and that he's like, it's totally refundable and how it seems like he might be like, as you're interpreting it, it might be like he's willing to change his plans should something happen between you two. Yeah. So a lot of our friendship is centered around, like we're both going through these career changes. Like I've had a big unconventional career change that he's been very supportive of. Anytime I try to make the conversation about him, like, Oh, like, have you found a job? Are you moving? Like, have you bought your plane ticket? Whatever. He's like, yeah, but plane tickets are refundable or, you know, it's a one way I can go visit so-and-so who lives out there. When you talk about he might be moving, what, what is his opportunity he's considering? Nothing like just change. Change. Okay. So, (laughs) so might, but it's like to a very random country that like, we know one person that lives there. Like, it's just like, I think it's his fantasy in his head. So it's a big might in terms of him leaving. Oh, send him a nude. Uh, Send him a nude? Yeah. I don't don't know. I mean, (laughs) I'm joking, but listen, I, I just, at the end of the day, I know this feels complicated for you. It's just not that complicated. Of course you should tell him is, I guess, my answer. You know, I if, thought you were going to say the opposite. Why? I don't know. I thought you were just going to say what good. I feel like it w- usually like I feel like when you give when you tell someone how you feel, either they already know and they don't care. or They don't feel the same way about you or it just makes it like uncomfortable. Like, what are the odds of me saying like I have feelings for him and him saying me, me too, like you just said? Well, only not only it's, it's because that's just. It's not about like, it's you don't not, need to yeah. get, like do the math for like odds to tell the truth. Like if you're not investing yeah. in a stock. You're being honest. You know, he's going to get into his head about like the risks and what he, you know, that common thing of like ruining the thing that we have. You're not going to get the oh me too right away, most likely, because I think this is a lot for him to process and mm-hmm. he is going to want to process that. And my guess is he's not going to want to commit to any grand statements of feelings before he processes what you're going to say to him. You're, we're also talking about a guy in his, in his late 20s. It's often that we don't meet the expectations we set for ourselves in our early 20s or late teens, and that can kind of fuck with us, and that can get us to think of doing crazy things like, I'm just going to move to another country with any, you know, because I know one person because he wants change, and whatever he's doing now, he's feeling unfulfilled about. So he's kind of going through this kind of very confusing time, which is why I say like the more certain you can sound and the more confident in your feelings that you can be, the better. And while he's unsure about his career and he's unsure about his future, you want him to be sure about trying things out with you. And so yeah, and if I go in confused, it's not going to help the situation. No, he's, it's like going to be like, well, if you're confused, why shouldn't I be confused? So let's say I do tell him, how do you suggest I do so? <laughs> Send a nerd. Or is that a loaded question? <laughs> no, we are not sending nudes. <laughs> it's an option. Yeah, that's not my vibe. The best way is the way that you, is you're, you're most comfortable with, where you can be direct and, and confident in what you're saying to him. I feel like in person would be really scary for me, but I don't necessarily want to do it in a text. Do you guys ever talk on the phone? No, not really. That's valid. So you text a lot? Yes. Yep. I don't think the text is the worst thing in the world. I mean, sure, in a perfect world, you sit them down, you have a conversation with them, yada, yada. But like, I don't think there's anything wrong with a text that's some version of like, I'm about to hit you with something you might find surprising. You may not. Incoming. (laughs) No, seriously. (laughs) And what's your rapport? Do you guys joke a lot? Like, what is... What is your relationship? Yeah. Like, how do you guys communicate? Yeah, very like joking banter. So I, I kind of like that I'm about to hit you with something or like some, I don't know. I think there's some funny way in a little, but. I think you should say, yeah, and you should say like, hey, what are you doing right now? Or are you sitting down? I have some news. <laughs> just say it <laughs> like that. Like we literally just talked to someone who had to tell someone they were pregnant. So bring that mm-hmm. energy almost. <laughs> I got some news. Are you sitting down? I got some news. I don't think he'll be expecting that. And then you're just like, I have feelings for you. And I think you should know. And then you say, (laughs) I assume this is a lot for you to process. So take some time. But when you're ready, (laughs) let's get together and, you know, talk more about it. I don't think you should pitch him on on the relationship. I think you should just be honest about your feelings. And then just see what he has to say and go from there. Okay, I like it. Again, you don't have to overcomplicate it. He's going to, 
However he feels, he'll eventually let you know. But your goal is to be A, confident, come across as confident, not wishy-washy, not, I don't know if you're going to be okay with it. And it's okay if you don't feel the same way. Don't hit him any with that. None, none of that. Of course it's okay. You don't need to tell him that. What you need to tell him is that you have feelings for him some level and then kind of in a, in a powerful sort of way, let him know that you're okay. And you understand if he's not, because this is a lot for him to process. So take the time because either way you're fine. You're a calm, collected individual who is going to be fine either way. And that's the, the message you're going to give him and that you look forward to sitting down with him and furthering this conversation, but it's time he knows. What if you don't say I have feelings for you? Cause it's so like, yeah. I, I think we should consider the idea that we date romantically. That's what you should say. Hey, I have some, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Are you sitting down? I have some news. I think it's time we consider being romantic or dating and be, or being more than friends. <laughs> Yeah. Or what do you think of like, I like you as more than a friend. What do you think? Okay. I like that better. Maybe. Sure. No, I don't know. It's fine. I mean, there's no wrong answer. I feel like if I just come out with like the, I think, what do you think of us dating or something? Like he might think it's a joke. No, I don't think you should ask him a question. You're only making oh. statements. Only statements. I like you. Take some time. This is probably a lot for you. That doesn't seem too serious or does that seem like funny? Well, throwing a winky emoji. I don't know. You do want him to take you seriously. Yeah. I don't care if you make him laugh. What I care is that he knows that you're serious and that you are going to be okay. And you're not, or, and you're not, well, it's okay if you don't want to, and it's fine. And I hope I didn't upset you with this news and blah, blah, blah. Like, don't apologize for how you feel about him. And yeah, you, you know, one way, he'll let you know one way or the other. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of, but. I know, I mean, but it, hit, him, hit him with the, we're not just friends. It's no longer available to him to have some of you if he doesn't want all of you, that you're not just friends. The big thing is once you try to enforce, once you try to set this boundary, you need to enforce it and you cannot go back to just being just friends. If he does the, I think you're great and I just don't know. And I just think of us as friends and, you know, uh, I don't want to lose our friendship. You just say, Hey, listen, I can't help how I feel. Turns out. You're, you're a wonderful guy who I want to explore something with and I will miss our friendship. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't see you as just a friend. So I can't just be your friend. So if this is how you feel, I totally get it, but this is also how I feel. And, you know, I respect your feelings and need to respect mine. So we're not friends and just be very matter of fact and very calm yeah. and then Stop giving him access to you. If his response is some version of, oh, I don't want to ruin this friendship, then you're going to have to cut off access and give him a glimpse into what life is like without having you in his life. So then he can reevaluate how he actually feels about you. Well, is this a person I really value in my life? Do I need her? Do I, my, are my feelings stronger than I anticipated? You've given him no reason at this point to even question if his feelings are more serious. So calm, confident, statements only. And in a text, keep it light and fun, not heavy. You know. Yeah. And then like, a, I don't know, throwing an emoji or something. Should we text him right now? <gasps> <laughs> Why not? Now's as good a time as any. Just text. I was thinking of doing it next week. Why? I don't know. Because we're going to see each other this weekend. Like we have like plans at this. We have similar Great. plan. Perfect. Same. Because Great. then no matter what happens, you can. But then I have to, to drop out of the plan. No, no, you, you don't. don't. Nope. No, you don't. Nope. It's nope. actually perfect because you can go regardless of what happens. Yeah. Treat him exactly the same or normally. You're yeah. not weird. You're not being dramatic. So then it's an immediate. It's actually better that way because if too much time passes and then it's like, are we going to see each other? Are we not? It's just going to raise the stakes in a way you don't need it to. You and can prove to him that you're like, no, nope, I got it. I'm confident. It's I'm good. very powerful yeah. showing up and treating someone normally. Yeah, and you he won't be at the stage of limited access to him yet because he's going he's going to be in the processing phase. You know, give him a couple weeks, but I'm just saying after you drop the truth to him, the clock stop starts, so to speak. And after about 2 to 3 weeks of letting him process and and hanging out with him and giving him a bit of a taste of what it might be like, after 3 weeks or so, give or take a day or two, you have to eventually be willing to say this is how I feel. And if you don't, we need to stop this. But between now and then, yes, every time you see him, you're just like, 
I feel how I feel, you know? Well, that's scary. Yeah. Eh, I know, but it's fine. It's not that. It's scary, but it's not... Um, but you can do scary things. Yeah. The worst case scenario, your ego's a little bruised. You don't know if this is your future husband. You don't know if you're even in love with him. All you know <laughs> is that you like him, you think there's potential there, and you want to explore it. And if yes. you find out he doesn't feel the same way about you, then that'll help you process that. And maybe, hopefully, you will take that into account is someone who's like, oh, well, he doesn't feel the same way. And yeah, my ego's a little bruised, but at the end of the day, I have my answer. I really think we should text him right now. At least we'll be here for you. But he, I know he's in the sure. office, so I just wonder if you guys would really get a reply right away. Like, it might be long. I feel like it's less about a response. It's just if you want a little hype squad with you, need you to, when you send you it. You need to break the ice. Yeah. There's no good time. Yeah. Okay. Make the joke. There's no good time well, for this, so I'm going to do it the worst possible time while you're at work. <laughs> Okay, so I think the text that we're thinking is there's okay. no good time. At Nick's thing of like, there's no good time to say this. So I'm going to choose the worst possible no, one. I'm going to choose the worst possible one. In the middle in of the, the, the workday. Work in the middle of the workday. Send that. Mm -mm. That's the first one. Next text is, I like you as more than a friend. If that phrasing feels good to you. I don't see you just as a friend anymore. Okay, I like that one better. Like, so think about it and get back to me within three oh, to five no, no, business no, no, days. No, no. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no. This, is, this is probably a lot for you to have process. So see where you're at and get back to me in three to five business days. <laughs> oh, God. Either way, looking forward to this weekend. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's going to be so like first text is like the no good time to say this. Second text, um, whatever version of like, I, I don't see you as a friend anymore. Third text. I know this is a lot like to process. That being said, if you want to come over and make out tonight, I'm available. <laughs> oh my. Tap the brakes, people. Have some fun. <laughs> Keep it loose. Uh, there's no good time to say this. So I'm going to choose the worst possible one. And then I have in parentheses in the middle of the work day. Then the next text, I don't see you as just a friend anymore. Next text, this is probably a lot for you to process. Now I'm at the next I think text. I think in the text that's this is probably a lot for you to process. Then it's like you said, like period. Same text. Yeah, same We're text. only sending three texts. I know this is probably a lot to process, comma. So please get back to me within three to five business days. Winky face. So like, yeah, so take your time, but get back to me within three to five business days. Also, if you want to make out, come over tonight. Okay. Ugh. What's wrong I thought with that? we're only doing three texts. Only three. All in the same text. No, with too much. Would you make out with them tonight if you wanted to come over? Yeah, that's... No, I don't think so. Oh, you wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> Redact. I feel like if you just came over, it would be like really random. Mm. I don't know. Uh, you crazy kids story. I think those three are good. Now we're sending. Yes. Yeah. Hey, we just want to congratulate you on your bravery. Yeah. You send, yeah nice job. Should I really send these? Or yes. Should I just absolutely. Yes. 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 Absolutely. What? This is funny. All you're going to get is an answer and an answer is clarity and clarity is powerful. And yeah, I can't promise you, you won't be disappointed in the short run, but this is going to save you a lot of fucking headache and confusion. And you're getting in, you're getting into territory of hanging out with him and being frustrated and confused because you're not being honest with him. You're not being honest with how you're feeling. And it's just a you're just avoiding so much wasted energy that I can promise. OK, you. but I, I will say if he says right away, if, if I get rejected, I'm not going to go this weekend. I'm just going to find a way out of it. Why? I don't know, because I, I don't want to be upset. What if that, I cry? Let's, I really mean it when I say it, that his default, he's going to be caught off guard and his default is going to protect the norm. And we don't know how he feels about you. And chances are, you're not going to find out right away. So you got yeah. to give it a couple weeks and let him process. And you're being serious when you say let him process. And eventually you'll probably have to cut off access. This is dating in 2023. You know, I unfortunately- It's a long process. It's a long process. So you can do this. You can go. And just know that he's not really rejecting you yet. He just doesn't know. Think of think in your head, he's a dum dum. You know, he's a, just a dum dum who just doesn't really know his feelings. So there's nothing really for you to feel awkward about or weird about. And be the confident person who does show up. And I agree with him. It's a power move. You can do it. You can go. You could do it. Come on, send the messages. They're great. I mean, either They're way, you're, They're you're, funny. you should still send the messages. But like, we'll get to as Amanda said. We'll 
we'll follow up with you on Friday and gas you up and make sure you go. Yeah. Because even if it's like somewhat painful or awkward and even if you have to go to the bathroom and like wipe away a tear, you're going to be glad that you went. But I just cried in the bathroom. It's keep okay. in mind, we don't, we, <laughs> we, we will, like, short of him being like, zero fucking chance. I can't believe you do this. Like, yeah, I like, want to be clear. He's not he going to say that. that you know? Right? He's going to say some version of, he's going to hit you with a bunch of compliments and he's just not sure and he just doesn't want to ruin the friendship. But that's confusion on his part. He doesn't really know yet. So don't psych yourself out. Don't convince yourself he hates you. Don't put words in his mouth that he's not saying. This is going to be a lot for him to process. So instead of being the disappointed, I can't show up and I'm so embarrassed, you have nothing to be embarrassed about. Pat yourself on the back for being brave, for having the guts to say how you felt. You have the power. You have the power. Don't confuse it that he has the power. You have the power because you put yourself out there. And you're just going to hang out with a guy who still hasn't like figured it out yet. You're either going to be surprised and get an amazing answer, or you're going to get the answer that we're all expected, which is he's just not going to have an answer for you right away. So there's no reason come this weekend for you to actually be rejected because you won't really know how he truly feels until you remove access and allow him to process life without you. Only Should I then. just remove access without sending the text? No, no, you gotta, no, gotta no, talk about no, how you no, feel. No, no, that's he's gonna confusing. be like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> no, because it is powerful to state how you feel. We know this because you're having such a hard time with it. I know it's just scary. Yeah, I know life is scary, but like it's full of risks, and you you're not gonna regret this. You just won't, because all you're gonna get is an answer. And there's no better way to waste time than wait to do something until you don't feel scared. Like that's been the most helpful change that I've ever made is being like, I can be fucking terrified and still do something. And it is the most like empowering mind, like mental shift I've ever made. Okay. Let's just send the text Send the te- before I <laughs> All right. All right, ready? get scared. Yes. All right. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to first one. Does it look bad if I just do them back to back? No. No. Yeah. Who gives bra, a shit? Bra, bra, yeah. bra. Okay, that one, was you texting. Done. It's like ripping off a band aid. I love yeah. it. Yep. Send it. That's the the second one's the worst one. Okay, okay, you got <laughs> it's it. The best one. You got it. Three, two, one. Send. Okay, done. Done. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna put my. I'm putting my Wait, phone on airplane you mode. Sent them all. Did you send the third the one too? No, don't put yes. it on airplane mode the rest of the day. <laughs> Also, you're gonna go green i'm turning off my phone <laughs> let him know you're turning off your phone well, yeah uh, and then he's gonna text you okay, back I'll, and that's gonna look not crazy disturb. yeah and also for the record i'm optimistic i think he's gonna have the biggest fucking smile on his face when he sees these texts and i think he's gonna be fucking thrilled i'm less optimistic but i don't <laughs> think <laughs> no i just think guys like his default is this gonna be uh you know and while we were yeah. talking on the phone i thought of similar situations that i've been in my life you know, I couldn't be happier with him in my life now, but I do remember like I had a friend, we spent a lot of time together and she kind of, I wasn't, this was a, so, this was fucking 15 years ago, but wonderful person. She told me she had feelings for me. I didn't handle it in a way that she wanted to, me to. And I was just kind of fucked up over, over someone else. It, it wasn't any identical situation. The point is, I don't really know what would have happened had she like, I mean, she got the answer too, you know, and it just like, but she was a great person and, you know, it's just like, you just never know, but like, there was no regret for her to tell me. All I'm saying is nothing bad happened from her telling me other than, you know, she didn't get the answer she wanted. I was a little fucked up. It wasn't the same situation, but I just, I guess the reason I brought it up is I just remember being so like surprised and caught off guard and kind of like, I didn't know what to think. And I truly did need time to process. You know, yeah, and I I do think that if she would have hit me with more confidence, and and not immediately like cried over it and and acted like she was lost and and whatever, I I would have been like, damn, you know. And so, like, what you did was so brave and so cool, and like. It's unlike you in the best possible way. And, and now you should feel good about yourself, regardless of his answer. You put your yeah, I think I just didn't want to regret not telling him. So yeah. even though it's scary to tell him, it's like I've had guy friends in the past that I've maybe felt the same about and have never told them. And then you lose your chance. But also, isn't there something to say about like if he wanted to, he would? Or do you hate that saying? I don't hate it. And there's a lot of truth to it. 
but I do think in this day and age, it's very, we are so used to these kind of non-committal relationships and having friends with benefits and, and blurring the lines between friendships and intimacy that it does take people time to process and people who become risk avoidant and get good at like having people they sleep with and then people they're friends with and having like, you know, a relationship through multiple people has become the norm. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, yes, eventually now, you know, down two or three weeks from now, after you've came forward with your feelings, allowed him to process and then, you know, hopefully have like an in-person conversation about it. And then you calmly say, hey, you know, if it comes to it, hey, you know, I wish you felt differently, but this is how I feel and I just don't want to be friends with you. Eventually, that's the point where if he wanted to, he would, would come into play, where you remove access, you know, because some people at that point would just have friends who make excuses. Oh, girl, he's just figuring out. He's just scared. He doesn't know what to do. You know, blah, blah, blah. That's when it's no. Honestly, if he wanted to, he would. You've told him how you feel. You know, you've given every reason to come around. He hasn't. You need to move on. That's when, if he wanted to, he would, comes into play. Right now, he has reasons to be confused and, can, you know, and want to protect the friendship and caught off guard and, and be wishy-washy, you know? So there's a time and a place for that. Right now, we're not there yet. You should feel good about yourself, about being brave and bold. Own your feelings. Be confident in what you said. Don't overreact with his immediate answer and remain confident in yourself and in your feelings. You have no reason to apologize for how you feel. And that's the energy I want you right. to bring into your conversation. It's like, hey, I feel how I feel, man. You know? Also, has he said anything? <laughs> has he responded? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Give him time. Let us know immediately. Yeah. And what's my follow-up reply? Um, well, I guess it like depends just, on what he says. I mean, let's just say he goes the, like... What if he, he's anytime. like, if, if he goes like, if, <laughs> if he goes like, well, you know, I uh, really caught off guard. First, I just want to say, I think you're great, but I just don't know if I feel that way. <laughs> I think you reply back. Well, I still think you should take some time, but either way, I'll see you this weekend. <laughs> okay. Just kind of confuse him with your almost indifference <laughs> and your confidence. Give yourself three weeks to kind of allow him to process and be confusing and and have it be awkward before you cut off access. And that's when you can have the can emotional, that. you know, that's when you can cry. His uh, refundable plane ticket is for like early September. So if he's gone by then, then I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. And, and if he's like, hey, where's this coming from? I'm like, well, one, you know, I know you've been considering leaving, but more than anything, I just like, I think we could be great together. I don't know, but I, I want to... I want to explore a relationship with you. And that's where, you know, depending on what he, he says, you can kind of hit him with the, I'm not saying I love you, you know, calm down. You know, I'm just saying, I think there's something more than just friends and it's time to just put it out there. Yeah. You know? I think he has to know a little bit. Like, I, I do think the level of like how his interest and how much he cares and how much we communicate, he has to be feeling some kind of way, but it could be similar to me where he wasn't sure for a long time and probably still isn't sure. Yeah. If I had to guess based on how well I know him. Yeah. But also I don't want to have to guess. Give him time and you just need to be confident that you don't regret being honest and it's okay to not regret being honest and it's still, it's still okay to admit to him, hey, I'm just a little sad that you don't feel the same way, but I don't regret telling you and I'm going to give you some time to think about it, but eventually... I'm just going to have to like not be friends with you. I mean, this wasn't going to go on forever. What yeah. were we going to do? Text every single day for the rest of our lives. Like he, I think at some point it would have ended. I anyway. think you bring this very matter of fact energy to him. It is what it is, buddy. I'm sorry. You're wonderful. Um, I'm not going to say that, but. Don't say, yeah, don't say that. <laughs> I think it's just time we figure out whether there's something there or not. You know, let's stop wasting each other's time pretending we're just friends. And if you're certain you only see me as a friend, then I'm certain that we can't keep hanging out as friends. All right? Yeah. Congratulations. You did a brave thing. Thanks. Thanks for all your help. All right. Uh, we must get an update. Okay. Immediately. I'll follow up. Yeah. All right. Okay. Congratulations. You did a great Thank day. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.
Thanks for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at thevilefiles.com. We'll see you back tomorrow to talk to Alex and Kat and Antonio and Roxanne from The Ultimatum. Another coming on Thursday. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.